most investors, you know, ha don't have the history and then they, they don't really know how to react in type in you know, types of situations like that. So, you know, everyone wants to make, make money, obviously. So they, they, they chase and they, they come in at the wrong time and then, and then they, you know, they often sell at the wrong time, unfortunately as well. Um, so, and yeah, then they could be buying on margin, you know, they could be, you know, anyways, it doesn't, you know, I just, I prefer to see, you know, a more sustained, you know, long-term growth. You know, I'm not, I think silver should be $30 an ounce and it, it, it was there for a very short period of time. I just didn't like the fact that it went there in a matter of a couple of days. Um, and also the stock, you know, when it did what it did, it doubled over a matter of a couple of days. Well, all that's still there. Um, um, you know, I think I'm a big cyclicality guy. I, you know, I, I'm a super seasonality, you know, investor. Uh, the best time to be buying mining stocks is in May, June and July. Um, you know, you go back 30 years and it's not always perfect, but, you know, it just happens, you know, to be for whatever reason, sell in May and go away, um, that, that the sector falters and uh, the metal prices drop. Uh, and you look at silver, the worst month for silver is June. And it's been like that for decades. Um, so, you know, I've had bids in my favorite stocks over the last few months or so. I'm surprised I bought so much stock over the last you know couple of weeks i didn't expect to see the prices i'm currently seeing but you know despite you know one side of me saying geez this is really ugly uh on the other side i'm saying wow this is great i could buy these stocks at such a cheap price well the flaw in the market in the entire mining sector is that the miners allow our commodity our product that we produce you know it's like if you if you're going to produce a pair of jeans you know you're you're, you're going to sell those jeans at a fixed uh, rate of return you know, in order for that business to, um, uh, you know, grow or at least, you know, um, you know make a profit. I mean, the mining sector doesn't have that, um, uh, you know, possibility. Um, uh, you know, we, we don't control the price of the product that we produce, which is, you know, a flaw for us. And uh, the mining sector, in my opinion, needs to get together and change the way the pricing environment, uh, it, you know, works. Um, you know, when, 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 you know, the miners produce 750 million ounces or 780 million ounces of silver a year and, and the paper market trades a billion ounces in one day, you know, that's a problem. <laughs> so, you know, if, 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 if there is demand uh, for the paper market, which there, we did see the Reddit, you know, crowd jump into the futures markets and, and, and drove the future price up. It's not that difficult for, you know, the, the, the paper just to be printed out of nowhere. Um, and there's really no limits. Uh, the banks have no limits. Uh, they, they, they can sell you know, as much paper metal as they wish to sell. And then the, the only really thing that there's two solutions. One is the in investors need to buy physical metal because if you take the physical metal out of the market, the, the, the sector, or the paper market has nothing there to back it because there has to be some physical backing for, for them to manage you know, the odd delivery that does occur. Uh, it, it, it rarely happens, but in, it, you know, when it does, they need that metal. So if, if the investors can take that metal off the market, which is what I advocate in the Reddit crowd and the Wall Street silver crowd, are currently advocating, in which now it's 120,000 members from zero a year ago, um, you know, which is fantastic. And then, you know, now there's a huge effort behind the scenes of stackers and and, and so on. So uh, we have a new buyer, and and, and I think it is working. It is, uh, but we have to just keep up the fight. the The only other solution is regulators step in and say, okay, banks, you know, you don't, you no longer can just sell unlimited amounts of paper. You have to have some kind of physical backing. And that goes to you know some of the discussions around Basel III, and there was some hope around that that you know the banks are hold that were holding paper gold would have to actually have physical gold, and and, and they couldn't use paper gold as a, a way of, of of using that as some kind of equity you know within their balance sheet. You know we'll see how that all works out, but you know that's really the only two solutions. So you know we have a, a mining sector. Uh, that produces approximately 800 million ounces of silver per year, peaked out at 890 million ounces back in 2016, and it's been dropping every year, year since. Uh, in, in 2020, through COVID, we produced 780 million ounces, but we're likely to get in 2021 back up to call it 800 million ounces. Um, but you've got the retail buyer taking 200 million, let's call, let's, let's assume the numbers are correct. Um, Seventy percent of of all this silver that we're producing goes into electronics. 
pretty well. You know, automobiles, solar panels, computers, cell phones, refrigerators, freezers. It was interesting. I was talking to my trader in New York a few months ago, and and during well, it was actually a little bit longer than that, about six months ago. And one of the biggest demands for silver was freezers. You know, due to COVID, um, there was this run on freezers. And Interesting. Yeah, and the freezer companies couldn't produce enough freezers because they couldn't get enough silver to produce the freezers. So, you know, people don't actually realize that, you know, that silver is a strategic metal. This is not a metal that we, that is just, you know, you know, uh, used to be coinage or, or used to be in photography. This is something that we critically need as the human race to survive and to do all the things that we need want to do to, to, to make our lives better. And, and without silver and, well, and copper as well, but you know, without silver, we just couldn't achieve all the objectives and goals that we have. So if you've got one buyer of 200 million ounces of silver in, in an 800 million ounce market, then you've got solar panels who are consuming about 100 million ounces. You've got electric cars, which are consuming about 100 million ounces. And you've got about a billion fuel combustion cars sitting on the surface of the earth that need to be replaced with electric cars over the next 10 or 20 years. Right, where's all this silver going to come from? So, you know, I, I don't think that you need the retail buyer to buy much more. You know, is the number 250 million ounces a year? I don't know. Right. Well, according to the research reports that I know that you dispute often, they would say it's coming from the miners. There's more than enough silver being scooped out of the ground. Well, they're wrong. Um, you know, at, at $25 silver, it's, you know, just do the math. So, so if you have, um, let, let's, you know, no one knows how much silver is in an electric car. You know, I, I, I dispute and I say, I say that approximately a kilo of silver is, is, is in an electric car. And that, and it's used to, you know, you know, to join the computers together and, and uh, with, with the battery packs and high speed, you know, super important computing capacity is required. And so you need silver to, to do that work. And it's, it's non-replaceable. You can't do it with any with any other metal except gold, which is not going to happen. So, um, you know, if you have there, there's 1.4 billion cars on the surface of the earth, and and we're producing 90 million cars per year, the auto industry globally, and of those 90 million cars, 4.5 million are electric cars. Electric car consumes three times more silver, approximately. And of course, we don't know the exact numbers. We're, there, we're guessing a little bit. Um, uh, than, than a normal fuel combustion car. So how many billions of ounces is that needed? And some governments want to eliminate all fuel combustion cars from their streets by 2030. Others have said 2035, some have said 2040, but that's a big effort. You know, you're, you know, the, where's the silver coming from? Uh, you know, and, and you see peak silver is 2015. It's in the Silver Institute's data. And it's been dropping every year for five years. So, you know, we can have to probably wait this out until August, September, until we see a bottom or at least some kind of stability. Uh, but I, my target for silver is still $30 for the end of the year.